Welcome to another episode in our series celebrating the remarkable underdog stories in Champions League history. Today, we'll be taking a trip down memory lane to an era when national champions from across Europe competed in the prestigious European Cup, a time before big money deals and the domination of the top five leagues. Our story takes us to the magical 1966-67 season, when an unassuming team from Glasgow, Scotland defied all the odds to lift the trophy and etch their name in European football history. Join us as we uncover the incredible tale of the Lisbon Lions, Glasgow Celtic. Back in the good old days, instead of five Spanish or English teams featuring in the competition every year, these much coveted places were reserved for national champions across the continent throwing up some crazy matchups that we might not recognize today. The first round of the 66-67 Champions League threw up some truly magical ties. Inter Milan versus Torpedo Moscow, Atletico Madrid versus Malmo, and 1860 Munich against Omonia Nicosia. These are among some of the fantastic ties of which we would not see the likes today. The Celtic team of 67 were heralded for their incredible brand of attacking football. They were described as the Dutch speeded up by squad member Jimmy Johnston. Their opponents in the final that year, Inter Milan, were the opposite, notorious for their fearsome defensive play. Inter had won Serie A in the 1963, 64 and 66 years, as well as the European Cup itself back to back in 64 and 65. So neither history nor experience was on Celtic's side, but thankfully for the hoops, it didn't matter in the end, as they blazed their own trail to European glory. Celtic are a great example of a massive football club that have been phased out of the big money in European football nowadays. We did a whole seven part series on UEFA financial fair play. The link is in the description below, so be sure to check it out if you're interested. Celtic, in reality, are a victim of their geography. They play in Scotland and not one of the so-called top five leagues that tend to accrue the vast majority of the wealth that exists in modern football. Decades ago, things like merchandise sales, TV money, all of that barely existed and it was a way more even playing field across Europe. With this, the European Cup was won by clubs from Scotland and Romania back in the day and not solely dominated by clubs from England and Spain. Despite still being a historic club that are giants in Scotland and have a huge global following, it is very unlikely that Celtic will reach the top of European football again. They simply cannot compete with the financial might of the Premier League and are constantly battling to keep their best players. Their domestic success is impressive and with Glasgow Rangers they have one of football's greatest rivalries, known as the Old Firm. The Glasgow Derby is always hotly contested as the clubs are undoubtedly the two top dogs in Scotland. Their rivalry stems from a divide in identity and political ideology. Over the years, Celtic have represented their Irish heritage and Rangers very much have flown the flag for Great Britain. Needless to say, it is a lot more than just a football rivalry in a city that is divided in green and blue. Apart from their domestic success and rivalry with Rangers, Celtic haven't had an awful lot to worry about on the European front, in the sense that they haven't been too successful at all. Before 67, they reached the semi-finals of the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup twice, losing to MTK Budapest of Hungary in 1964 and to Liverpool in 66. All the while, their Lisbon final opponents, Inter, were picking up the biggest trophy of them all. Since their triumph in Lisbon, Celtic have appeared in two more European finals, but they have lost them both. They were defeated by Feyenoord in the European Cup Final of 1970 after an extra-time winner for the Dutch side in the San Siro and they wouldn't return to another European final again until 2003. In 2003, they met the might of Jose Mourinho's Porto in the UEFA Cup final, the same team that would go on to win the Champions League the year after. On a hot night in Seville, Celtic fell to another cruel extra time defeat. This time, it was 3-2 to the opposition. As they famously do, Celtic supporters turned another city completely green and white for a couple of days. Their all-time European top goalscorer, Henrik Larsson, scored two goals in that final but his genius forward play was not enough. So despite the fact that Celtic aren't quite ever present in European history, and they now struggle to get past the Champions League group stages, they are still one of just 22 clubs to lift the famous trophy. Who knows, that number could stay on 22 for an awful long time. Arsenal, Atletico Madrid, Paris Saint-Germain and Roma are among some of the great names that have never achieved what Celtic have. In that famous season of 66-67, Celtic were led by the most famous manager in their history, Jock Steen, who managed over 700 games at the club. They were also led by inspirational captain Billy McNeil, 
who won nine league titles at Celtic Park as a player and who would go on to create his own success as a Celtic manager with four more league titles. Celtic came into the season as Scottish champions, defeating Rangers in the league by just two points the previous year. They started off their 67 European campaign with an impressive 5-0 aggregate win over Swiss side FC Zurich, and then in the next round had to come from behind to overcome French side Nantes, but ended up winning the tie comfortably with a 6-2 scoreline over two legs. That year, Celtic competed in five trophies and they won them all. A stunning achievement. As well as their historic European Cup triumph, the Hoops won the Scottish League and Cup, the Scottish League Cup and the Glasgow Cup. Over the course of the season, they only lost three games in all competitions. One of those defeats came in Europe and it was in the next round of their journey to glory, the quarterfinals. They lost 1-0 in Novi Sad, modern day Serbia, but then old Yugoslavia. Their opponents, VK Vojvodina, had to come to Celtic Park for the second leg though. And again, Celtic would come back in Europe, this time winning 2-0 on the night to take a 2-1 aggregate victory. Celtic won 26 of 34 league games to take the title and drew just six games that year. Their only draw in European competition proved to be a great result as in the semi-finals they came up against Dukla Prague of the Czech Republic. This time, no comeback was needed as they won the first leg 3-1 at home in Glasgow and settled for that 0-0 draw in the second leg to secure their place in their first European Cup final. Inter had defeated the tournament holders, the mighty Real Madrid, 3-0 on aggregate in fact in the quarters, and also squeezed past Siska red flag of Bulgaria in the semis, needing a 1-0 playoff victory after a 3-3 scoreline in the first two encounters. In the lead up to the final, there was more talk of Inter winning a famous tripleta, their third European Cup, than a Celtic victory. Crucial Celtic forward Joe McBride was out injured for the Glasgow side, and Inter Milan were a very hard side to break down led by coach Helenino Herrera, who was the highest paid manager in all of Europe at the time. Inter were also missing a star player, Spanish legend Luis Suarez, who you might remember from our last video, famously played for Barcelona in their final defeat to Benfica a few years earlier. Maybe Suarez was a bad omen. And another bad omen for the Italians was their flailing form. The champions of Italy had a treble in their hands, but in the lead up to the European Cup final, they managed to throw away the domestic league and cup with two major defeats in two games. Inter now sought to salvage their season with European glory, but instead it would be the icing on the cake for Celtic in their perfect five trophy winning 66-67 season. It didn't all seem to be going to plan though. It was Inter who started strong with early chances and an early goal. A penalty after seven minutes put the Milan side ahead. In typical fashion, after taking the lead, Inter recoiled and set up in their defensive shape, inviting wave after wave of Celtic attack. The Nerazzurri were very difficult to break down, but Celtic had one of Europe's best attacks and kept knocking on the door, hitting the bar twice before equalising just after the hour mark. Inter goalkeeper Sarti had been amazing, but Celtic were dominating the game, and Inter couldn't even get out of their own half. The famous winner came in the 84th minute from Stevie Chalmers. The final whistle blew shortly after and Celtic fans stormed the pitch in Lisbon, absolutely delirious. Pandemonium ensued and some Celtic players even had their shirts taken by fans. Captain McNeil needed a security escort to a podium in order to receive the trophy. For Inter on the other hand, it was truly the end of an era. La Grande Inter, the best side in their history, nearly won the treble that year and ended up completely empty handed. Despite Celtic being the better side on the day and perhaps all season, this story still has the fairy tale elements that we love to hear. The local Glasgow boys beat the European Giants of Inter when a lot didn't give them a chance. And today, despite their European struggles, Celtic wear a golden star above their club crest to remind everyone of the great success of the Lisbon Lions. A star they can use to goad rivals Rangers for eternity and a European Cup that will never be taken away from them. Inter coach Herrera congratulated Celtic and said they deserved the victory. Liverpool manager Bill Shankly said to Celtic coach Jock Steen, you are immortal now. His statue outside Celtic Park would back that quote up. Glasgow Celtic Football Club, European champions of 1967.